I want to uh, first, um, you know, stop and just kind of start with a statement that I think, you know, uh, tonight, I'm, my goal tonight is to kind of hit on uh, obviously what we did last year in 2014. Uh, and I think it's important that we celebrate those things because I think it's easy in today's society we're bombarded con continuously with media and a lot of negative aspects of it. I think it's always good to honor what we did do and give thanks what we've achieved, not what we haven't achieved. Because I believe this, I believe our history and destiny, each of our histories in the city is going to be, re be recorded five, 10, 20 years down the road with what we did with what's been given to us. So I think it's important that part of that includes celebrating what we did do, not what we didn't do. There's enough people out there that's going to tell us what we didn't do. It's we got to remember what we achieved. And so I just want to start the night out by saying, hey, we have an opportunity carved out in history that our children, maybe our grandchildren, will note what we did faithfully with excellence with what's been given to us. And so to start the night, I just want to make that footprint for each of us. And so tonight when I start talking about what we achieved last year, what we're looking to do, what's on my heart going forward, I want you to understand that's, that's a passion of mine to make sure we honor that well. So 2014, because, um, actually let me back up a second. Destin, I know Ed's here, Ed Trader from the TDC um, is here, um, and they do an amazing job marketing our area. Um, and you can look in many of the accolades, whether it's Southern Living, uh, U.S. News and World Report, Nashville Magazine, Parent Magazine, there's a lot of magazines out there, and what they often do, um, and I celebrate, is, hey, Destin, number one beach destination, U.S. News and World Report, number one beach destination in Florida, number seven in America. Um, Southern Living is the top family beach destination, I think, in the southeast, I don't, southeast, I don't know how many years running. Um, National Parent Magazine talks about the family beach experience. Think, amazing accolades. You can go down a list. It's just like a who's who of periodicals that's, that have picked out Destin to be all these amazing things. And we know it. We live here. We work here. We raise our families here. We maybe vacationed here before, but something got us here. And so when I look back at that quote I had before of being faithful to what we have when, when it's been given to us, I, I celebrate the victories, and those are amazing things. That, that makes me, hey, number one beach. To me, I'm, I'm, I love the number one family beach. That's important to me. But I think I'm also challenged with, I, I think to me at least, I back myself up and say, okay, if we have all these great things happening, I think there deserves to be a comma. If we're faithful stewards over our city that we all live in, that we earn our living from, I think it's fair to say we should add a comma on the end of that with another question, which says, now what? If we're the number, if they're coming here by the millions, and we live here, we, and we, we earn our living, a lot of us, close to Turtle, I think a comma should be asked, now what? What are we doing? What are we faithful with? Because that's a question I ask myself, and maybe I'm the only one in the room that gets, gets challenged by that. But when I look back, you know, my, my kids are here, my, my two, my sons, Preston and Casey in the back, and my, my daughter's not here, but I shared this the other day when I was speaking. This is the challenge that I give myself, that when they leave, is what we birthed and steward in this city enough to burn a desire in their heart that if they go somewhere to school, live, or work, that are they not looking back thinking, man, I wish I was back in Destin? What they've started there, what's going on in that city for family where I was raised, is there enough desire here, enough opportunity to pull them back once they leave? And so to me, that question's important. The now what? What we've been given. What do we do with it? I think it's important. So I'm going to hit on a few things. I love to celebrate and give honor where honors due. The list is a lot longer than I'm going to hit on tonight, and the, but it's highlights. And I think it's important, again, because I can look back and probably talking to people in 2014, they'd probably say, well, you know, there's, I remember the flood, you know, over there, but there's things I want, because I've talked to Doug that one of the desires I have is to, to start a storyboard at City Hall. And what that means is essentially this. If, if our council is up on the dais, and we're looking out in the audience, I would love to have a visual memorial reminder that when we get challenged with things and have to maybe make tough votes, I want a wall of memories. Hey, listen, in 2014, look what we achieved. Look at the great things. I want to always be reminded of the milestones we reached as a city. Because if we remember those things and hard times come our way, we can remember the great victories we've had as a community. So tonight, I won't be able to honor all of them, but I'm going to hit a few. Um, first. <laughs> for us, we started with a new council last year in March, and I'm very honored to, and that 
I was very honored no one ran against me. Hallelujah. Woo! Janice. I don't know if uh, Craig, I mean, I'll tell you the hard part is coming behind a Mayor Barker, Mayor Seavers, and Mayor Beard. They, they've made such an amazing pathway that I hope Craig took his shoes because I can't fill them. I mean, and if Sam was here, I'd tell her the same thing. They, they, did, they were such excellent mayors that I can't live up to what they, they're so amazing. So I just kind of take the scraps a little bit and do the best I can, but I celebrate the work that they, they did. It gave me, their ceiling became my floor for sure. But we had the honor to have Jim Foreman re-elected uh, to city council, which is a great victory for the city. And I actually love that we added two new faces, Ms. Pebble Ramswell and Mr. Riding Braden. So again, a major victory for our city. Uh, I'm excited about where we're going um, with the leadership we have. And then I'm also thankful that um, Marianne uh, Eustick was uh, a great leader for the city manager we had for the seasons we was here, but she chose to go back west, which created an open door to get back uh, Lucy Casella. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> and, absolutely. And Greg and Greg too. And we'll take him. But, you know, it's, it, it's, Lucy's like the secret sauce now. I'll tell you, it's, it's, you know, it's like my wife. You know, it's, it, Mel's great, but Mel, where's Mona? So you're good, you're fine. That's the same way, you know, Greg, we're, we aren't, but Lucy, man, hey, this, so we're thankful to get you. Um, we celebrated our 30-year anniversary this year. I think it was important, a major milestone for us and some of the things along the way. We've got 19 years running, as, and Bragg Farmers here, I know, is achievement for excellence in financial reporting. I think it's important that our, our citizens know that we handle our finances with excellence. So much so we get recognized 19 years in a row for the way we handle them. 12 years in a row is Tree City USA. I think it's good. We have an environmental committee that does an amazing job with that, among other things, and it's important. I love these, these some of the things we've started. My wife, I called her out a little while ago, the, the, the year, the first, the first year the city was incorporated, she was Miss Destin. And so, it's a, aim, uh, she wasn't the very first one, but 30 years ago she was. <laughs> And, and to still be 25 is just an amazing, amazing feat. Some of the things in the flood, um, big, it's a big, you know, big deal. You know, it affected, you know, a, a storm like that came through um, uh, 100 year, 500 year, whatever way the scientists want to call it, 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 all I know is it messed up our city. But what I celebrate is um, the leadership our city, our city uh, showed during the troubles in time that they came together to rally. I mean, this this picture right here um, is actually, you know, I'm sorry that you know the issue with the why, but that came to city pool for about a week, <laughs> um, as bad as it was. I mean, it's flooded. The whole parking lot was flooded. It was crazy. Um, you know, went out. I mean, I know Miss Ramsell and others were out dealing with neighbors, hand on, hands on, cleaning. I me. Mean, I was out, you know, getting rid of water from people's houses. It was just a tough time, but we fought through it. Again, I, one of the things I want to remember is that the victory we had, despite the hard times, I mean, there was, it was tough moments when the staff needed wisdom to, because we're getting a lot of phone calls, houses flooding, things of that nature. They use strategic, I mean, it's crazy how everything worked out. They're the right place at the right time. Didn't sell, solve all the problems, but they solved all the major ones. So we were able to get through it, I thought, very nicely. So I celebrate the staff for that. Um, got this, because of that, I mean, thankfully on the heels of that, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, we got a $3.6 million stormwater grant. The victory, I, that's crazy cool that that happened. I mean, we are able to do, we're thinking about, I mean, utilities, all kinds of stuff that we may have to go to, but on the heels of 3.6 million, that's a major relief to our city, especially the financial aspect of it. To me, that's a victory. Man, I mean, uh, to me, that's, I mean, Craig, you know, bro, that's, I mean, 3.6, that's good stuff. And then I know we got another request for another million right now with the state, um, with the state to do some more work at Heritage Run, and I'm sure hoping that comes through. We have to hope, to hope for that. Sports tourism. I, uh, Lance is here, Lance Johnson, he and his team do a phenomenal job with that. And, you know, the Morgan family with, you know, with, the, with the land and the Morgan Sports Center, um, it's an asset we have, so why not capitalize that? I think Lance has done an amazing job taking advantage of that. And one of the stats that is the USSA, youth, we had their Youth Baseball World Series here. I mean, Destin, what I love is the beaches and the waters are attractive to the pool. It's some of the stuff we have offshore that's making it a little sticky. And so I love that, that uh, what they've done is, put, and that tournament alone brought 90 teams to Destin. Uh, 87 were from outside of our area, from 11 different states, with uh, states with an economic impact, arguably between a million and a million and a half dollars from just one tournament. That to me is good stuff. That to me is taking advantage of what we have, uh, low hanging fruit and bringing an economic impact to our city in a time that would help. So, and I'm, I'm sure that will continue on under Lance's leadership. 
community teamwork. Uh, one of the things that soon after Greg got back that we called was a stakeholder meeting. Many of you in this room were probably there that day. I absolutely love what took place that day because as I looked out in that room and surveyed who was there, um, it was a diversified group of people. But when we, you know, it's one thing to say, Mel and Greg, you know, you think you have whatever, but no, I believe that we have the mind of our city. We, it's the collective effort of the unity of what we have, the strengths, the things we bring to the, bring to the table solve, can solve problems. And that day, within a matter of a couple hours or so, we put together a strategy. You know, Ed was there, straighter from the TDC. Captain Peco was there from the Sheriff's Department. They both gave updates. And then collectively, by ideas, we chiseled down. We went to tables. We kind of dwindled it down. We came out with marching orders, code enforcement, some things, important things for our city that were birthed from that thing. How, you know, gave some, really some stuff to, to Ed on how, how we market our city. What do we become known for? Things were birthed from one afternoon. Think about one afternoon at City Hall. We had strategic, marketable plans that we can implement already. Our strength is greater when it's the we versus the I, and I absolutely love that. Secondly, a partnership, and I know Shane's here from the Destin Chamber, and I've, I've had a chance to celebrate him the last few days, and uh, he and uh, Ken's here as well, that uh, his chairman this year, and I thank, I thank them for their leadership because they have the opportunity to really to shape the pulse of the marketplace of our city, and so I'm, I'm I appreciate you being here tonight. But they, their Destin Forward class for 2015 came and partnered with the Destin History and Fishing Museum, and they're restoring the primrose and uh, basically done, close to being done, and the old post office, and then they'll both be moved over to the Fishing uh, History Museum here shortly. But a partnership, public-private partnership, that we achieved, we had a need, they had a desire, we partnered, fruit came forth. Love that, absolutely love that, celebrate that. This is a funny one. That is a street sweeper. <laughs> Marianne used it before she left. Um, uh, now, I, I came on the heels of that, so Kyron, Jim, some of you probably can help me on that, but her desire is to get a street sweeper for the city. And the funny thing about it is when Doug Rayner, who's our um, director of PR for the city, was telling me, Mel, we got a couple city videos, and he said, funny enough, the one that's got the most hits is of a street sweeper. <laughs> and so what I asked, I'm going to show the video, and I've asked Mr. Webb Warren to jazz it up a little bit. But this is the video. <laughs> now listen, over 10, You'd think a video as hot as, as hot as this right here <laughs> would get maybe about 50 views, maybe 50 views. This thing got like 10,000. <laughs> now what I told, you know, for Saturday's Valentine's Day, <laughs> what I told my wife was that we're going to re put this on repeat and watch it all night Saturday night <laughs> because it's exciting, it just pulled. Now you're really bored to pop this thing on 10,000 times. So, but it was, it was it's, a, it's a victory. So now we got street sweepers, so we're off and running with that. And I thought it was kind of fun. Noriega Point, <laughs> Noriega Point stabilization, big, big, important piece of our city right there. Um, Mayor Sievers, of course, um, victoriously got $10.2 million. Uh, it's going to come and help us finish the stabilization project, but we started last year. That to me is a great, it's a, we start, we're off and running. Uh, the rest of the, the phase one of the stabilization will begin later this fall. Uh, so you'll see uh, quite a bit of new sand brought into to Noriega Point. Um, it's important. It protects our fleet. It's the mouth of our harbor. Amazing history takes place out there. So I'm excited about that. Um, Destin Elementary School set a world record. Well, they're still working through the details, I think, of that. But I love that. You know, it's one thing we, all, you know, we think about the major things our city does um, from a tourism and economic things. But I, I don't like overlooking the kids and what they're, I mean, they're achieving great things, too. And Destin Elementary School um, set the world's largest uh, turnout for a tennis lesson. And the, the sticking point, sadly, is that also, by the way, had 9,000 views, their little video clip. But what I, um, the sticking point is that they don't have a continuous video stream. Is that right? Of the whole thing? So they're trying to decide if they're going to let them go through or not, which I think is terrible. Um, but amazing turnout, a lot of fun, beautiful weather, um, and the kids were celebrated. So I absolutely love that. Um, in addition to that, of course, Kelly Street is about to be done, which is good. Uh, the Crosstown Connector, we're working on that. Um, there's some other things that were taking place in the city. 
that were always in the works and process. And so um, those are some of the just highlighted things for 2014 I wanted to bring about. I'd like to now actually transition into 2015 and where we go from here. Um, because, uh, you know, a lot of times, um, another question I ask myself a lot after the comma, now what, is what are we known for? What do we want to be known for? And I challenge myself a lot because um, in a city like ours that has, you know, a million and a half, two million people or so, Ed, you can correct me anytime on the numbers, but they come through our gates, you know, every year. Um, they can either decide what we become known for or we can decide what we become known for. And, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in the sizzle of something that's around the cooking on the outside. And I'm, I'm more worried about the foundation of what we're, we're built upon. Um, I can build the be most beautiful building in the world, but unless my foundation is solid, it doesn't matter what I put on top. And so when I think about us as a city, I think about our DNA, our heritage, what we come from, you know, the backs of the fishermen, what we've been birthed into. I get troubled by some of the things I hear on the peripheral because that's not us. And so I don't want to be swayed by that. You know, I believe this. I believe everything is permissible, can be permissible, but I don't believe everything's profitable. And so what I mean by that is just because I can do something doesn't mean it's what's right for the city or what's right for, you know, my business or whatever, because I believe there's a return to a community. When something comes into town, does it graft into the DNA of the city? Is the return on the community the same? In, I, yeah, I celebrate return on the development. Hey, yes, if you're going to put forth the capital, I, you need to get a return. But is what you're coming into the city, does, is there a return on the community? And so that's stuff that I, I question myself about. So when I talk, there's, there's some, a card of nature in your hands, but I'm, I'm going to hit on five things so that, you know, to me, they're, they're foundational. They're, they're, they're the core to who we are as a city. They're the core to what I believe in. And so I want each of you, you know, if you leave tonight, uh, and if, I, if you know what Mayor Mel stands for, you'll know tonight. Some of y'all heard me say some of these things, so I, for the sake of not being too repetitive, I won't go into all of them, but I love this quote. This came out, and I asked Matt for permission because I took a picture of the log. I didn't actually cut it out of the log, but he said, what I'm doing is fine. Now, Grant, I know this is the Goodyear store, but I thought it was a declarative statement over the city. Goodyear to be in Destin for 2015. It's a good year to be in Destin in 2015. I hope I'm not the only one that's excited about that. I don't think it's declarative. If you can't rise up to what's been declared over our city, don't miss this up. It's a good year to be in Destin in 2015. I also think it's a starting point of where we're going as we remember our heritage and build upon our past and we celebrate the present and where we go tomorrow. But I'm excited. It's a good year to be in Destin. As I talk about five, you know, five or ten years from now, what do we know? I've already hit on that a little bit. Cause, and the reason I have this is I've seen the little images of the angel and the devil, all those fun. I, I just think there's always mean influence. Unless you know who you are, I mean, it's like that saying goes, if you don't know who you are, you don't know what you stand for, you'll fall for anything. If we as a city, I think part of the, the call of me being a mayor for the time I'm here is just to remind us who we are as a city, to understand our heritage and our foundation so that where we go after I'm well done and gone, we all have the constant reminder of what foundation we stand upon. So it's important if we're out five, ten years from now looking back, sketching history of what took place in Destin and, and the amazing team of counselors are going to help lead the city. Um, I want to be sketched on this thing, man, what we celebrated. We took care of our people. We honored our staff. We honored the citizens. We took care of our own. We're a city of family. All these amazing things, that's what I want us to remember members by. And I'll start with these. A city of family and honor. Now, I won't go too deep these because if you've heard me speak, you've heard me hit on family. <coughs> I'm a firm believer that once, you know, I know, I think Kelly and Regatta, they're, they're, just, they're attached and I love that. They're, but once you strap on three, two, five, four, one, you're family. Once you came into the city, you're family. Regardless of your neighborhood, where you're at, you're family. And the more we look at ourselves that way instead of, oh, it's them, that, uh-uh. To me, we're in the same city. We don't go out in this place and say, oh, we're this, that. No, we just say, where do you live? We live Destin. So where are you from? I'm not from Indian Bayou I'm, uh, in Destin. I'm not from... Holiday Isle, I'm from Destin. So for that, we're family. Secondly, oh, along the heels of that, we launched last fall at our 30 year anniversary, a, a hashtag Destin family. And uh, I don't know what hashtag means. So, <laughs> so uh, my, my sons will probably make fun of me. Pound, it was pound, ten, pound, pound, pound cake? Hallow, what? Okay. <laughs> Two bite brown? All right, well, now we're gonna try to market this a little bit. Dest, hashtag, pound sign, hashtag Destin family. And so uh, people a lot more creative than me are going to help us with that. 
There's a good friend of mine who's here, uh, Mike Ginn is in the back, and you know, because a lot, of, and he said this to me, and it really caught my attention because, and Ed, I'm saying it because I know you probably get it too, uh, in terms of how many destinations take on that phrase, oh, but we're, you know, come, you know, come here, we got a fam the best family experience. Come to my resort, come to my city, come to my beach, we'll get, we're going to give you the best family experience. And he said, you know, Mel, it's great, but I think the key thing we need to focus on is let them come here and let them experience family. Right? So if we're going to say that, I want to be more than a family experience. When guests come to our shores from Knoxville, Nashville, Montgomery, Baton Rouge, I want them to experience family. So that they leave this place and go back, when they go into Circle K or whatever, people behind the they're honoring their presence. They're, Man, we're so thankful you're here. I mean, it shifts the culture. It shifts the experience from one of just coming in and checking the box of having a... I want them to experience something when they come to the city. Honor. I mean, celebrating who a person is, not what they're not. You've heard me speak on that before. I'm a big believer in that. Celebrate the top, and I celebrate the bottom. And everyone in between. Because I believe this, that community spheres of influence are meant to complete one another, not compete with one another. And a city is meant to fit together perfectly so that every part does its own special work. And as they do that, it causes the other parts to grow. And so when you work together and you honor the parts and you recognize every piece, every person on the team is important, and you celebrate that. I know there's different roles and aspects, but when you honor that, it's a game changer. The results are so much different when you function as a team and honor each other as opposed to a bunch of individuals beating each other up and getting competitive. That's not what my desire is for the city, to honor that. We're one city already. Why, why fragment ourselves? Why be divided? Let's be unified. Not allowing outside, outside influence to affect the city. We're all called to be watchmen, I believe. Um, you know, there's things happen on the peripheral. We need to be mindful of what's happening on the horizon coming in. We got kids. I, got, I don't want my 10-year-old daughter affected by something that slips in through our gate because we weren't prepared for being mindful. Likewise, there would need to be what, what's going on inside the city. Is there sex trafficking? Is there drugs? Is there things happening that's going to affect the fishing industry? What, we need to be mindful of that stuff. Sound the alarm. So we can all, as a team, as the we, come up with a solution. Being others focused, radical generosity, I, I just for the sake of time, I'm not going to hit those too much, but adopt the street. This has been something I'm passionate about since I came on board because um, uh, when I was reminded after I was sworn in that, you know, when they had, when the, um, and I forget, is the prime minister or king of Spain, one of, uh, there's a, it's the Spain guy, came to Pensacola several years back. You know, I, I, I don't know what they spent. Probably, I heard a figure of around a million dollars, give or take. They spent cleaning the city for him to come in. I mean, they spent a ton of money for him to come in. I think it was only a day or two, maybe even a day he's in the city. And I thought, man, I don't know what the economic impact was of his presence, but I'm sure it was pretty solid. But I'm thinking, you know, Ed gave me these figures that, you know, tourism impacts us over $600 million. Why? I mean, they're here throughout the year, especially during the summer. We should be honor, you know, like they did for the king, we should be honoring them already in our city. You know, adopting this, I believe, adopting the streets, working, I, mean, I got a chance to walk Main Street with Sandsteads up here in the front, walk, picking up trash, making it clean. There was a lot of streets not taken. I mean, Doug told me the numbers, I mean, we, we've had added more teams since we've come on board. I think it's important we fill out and take the whole city. We should clean the whole thing. You know, we should why, be honor each other. Honor our neighbors in this situation, not just, I mean, love, some tourists will never see the back roads of Destin, but our neighbors will, so why not honor each other? So that's important. A city of opportunity. I mentioned sports tourism. I know Lance will continue to work on that, and as we continue to, I think it's a it's a gold mine. It's a chance to bring more people in. Um, I think the TDC, what their Ed's doing, um, I celebrate that. It's important um, that we continue to honor that. What they're doing, the military. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of the military. Um, in fact, if you're in the military, would you just raise your hand real quick? A former military. Thank you. I'm a big fan of it. They protect us. They surround us. We've got to honor that group. Also, it's a major economic impact, not just us, but the whole region. So, honor, big fan of the military. Uh, of course, through the chamber, the EDC's leadership, uh, the EDATE tax abatement program gives us an opportunity to carve out uh, some strategic industries that can come to our city. We need to take advantage of that. Oakless Restore, Restore Act, um, Mayor Seavers uh, is leading the charge of that with, with others to help bring some dollars back toward the city of Destin. Uh, I know. Uh, Greg has, has already worked with staff on presenting plans to them to, that could be uh, receivers of those funds. I think we have 6.4 million coming in. First leg and then the second leg could be a big number, could be 60 to 100 million or so coming into the county. And so we need to be positioned to receive that. And Greg's done an amazing job on that, so thanks. So this one is new, Sports Science Systems. I have it up here just because 
Um, Andre Walker is a good friend of mine. He's here. He, uh, he has um, a cool idea for water, uh, anti-dehydration, anti-cramping, amazing favor. But he's got a lot of people tugging on him to come to their city. And, and right now he's looking to put his headquarters in Destin. And the reason I'm even bringing that up is because Destin can't house a Kia manufacturing plant, right? But we can house positions and businesses that can bring economic impact to our city that are palatable. They, they graft in well to the city. And this is just one example that we need to be mindful of that's a high, high net worth, high tech company um, that's cutting edge in tech with water that's going to be international once it launches and Destin will probably be its headquarters. That's, that's significant, so that's just economic opportunity. Destin Fish and Rodeo, Destin Seafood Festival, I know Jamie's here, I don't think Helen is here, maybe she is, but um, the reason I'm showing these is because of opportunity. Um, first, I'm a huge fan of the fishing industry. Um, they're a heritage, they're a history, I'll celebrate that. But when I was went to their annual meeting um, a few weeks ago, I was getting some of the stats from uh, Captain Staples. And they don't have it here, but basically said in October, and Ed, you'd like this, 78,000, 78,000 room nights in October alone that the fishing rodeo brings in. You take that and you tack on Jamie's leadership with the Seafood Festival, and it's just icing on the cake. It comes to the time of year. I know that this is a long tradition in the city, the fishing rodeo. I mean, Captain Wines, if he, he could probably tell 15 stories that quick if I called him up about stuff that took place in October. Um, but... We need to celebrate that. Um, I do at least. I honor that because the economic impact, not only does it honor our fishing industry, but it blesses our hotels, restaurants, things where they come out and shop. Economic opportunity to give thanks for something that's already moving in the city and we're just kind of attaching into it. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. A city of hospitality. A city of hospitality. And this one, my wife mentioned this to me last year. And I know this is another thing I can't shake. It's kind of now into my system a little bit. And I'm not, I've got this up here. Um, and it's not to make anyone nervous about what's on the next slide, but I think it's just a, something to throw out there. A lot of times, you know, without vision, you don't know where we're going sometimes. Um, but I like this. And the reason, I want to tell you why. That a city of hospitality, you know, if you look at the definition of hospitality, and we, 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 it's easy to grasp the 30,000 foot level where, you know, it says, and it's how you treat guests and visitors and how you serve guests and visitors and things of that nature. But when you look at the definition of hospitality, the, the definition does not say that the guests and visitors have to come from outside the city limits. It just says how you treat people. In fact, if you look at the definition, hospitality is actually the point of connect. It's not how, when you come into the Emerald Grand or Holiday, it's not how well the, the, the person greets you. The hospitality is actually the connection point between the host and the guest. It's that moment of truth, as Dr. Handy Nolnack, Holnack told me from you. It's the moment of truth between what takes place. And so I don't know about you, but if you're going on vacation somewhere, and you're going driving into the city, and the tagline underneath the city limit sign said, city of hospitality, my expectation level just went up. Wouldn't yours? Oh, if they're calling themselves a city of hospitality, then I'm sure I'm going to be treated differently in that city. But for me, it goes on, it goes so much more than just their encounter at the hotel. To me, if they go to Circle K and get a cup of coffee, it's the, guy, it's the lady or gentleman behind the counter that says, oh, hey, man, we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Where are you from? Oh, where are you from? Man, we're so honored. Do you have any questions on the city? Where are you looking to eat? How can I serve you? Man, we're so, just, I mean, it's a different, you treat, I mean, I want their experience in Destin when they come to be so much so that they will never go to another beach destination other than Destin because of how they're treated here. That when they go back to Knoxville, Nashville, wherever they're from, they're like, man, I don't know what's going on in the water in Destin, Florida, but my gosh. I had the best experience of my life on vacation. That city honored me. They were thankful. They kept telling me, thank you for coming. They asked me, it's and I just love that. It's, it's a declaration, I think, to me that, you know, what we can become. And what I like, we're doing a great job already, and that's just, I celebrate what we're doing already, but I'm thinking this, if you interweave, the, interweave that into how we treat each other as residents, the honor part, the celebrating part, and I think it's a game changer. And it will unite us as even a greater capacity as family. So I love that. A city of generations. I was already called out. I felt bad. My boys are in the back. I use them as, as examples a lot. But it's just what I said earlier. That you know, a lot of times it's easy when the, in the games of ways of life and trying to provide finances and earn a living and things like that. It's easy to get caught up on um, the here and now. What's got to be done now. 
Um, but I, if you don't thinking generationally, then we're making a mistake. I think it's very important that we honor those that have come before us. They walk in amazing wisdom. They've been there already. We should celebrate that. They should always have a seat at the table. We should honor us now, the ones that are here, making decisions for the city. What do we implement today? What is going to impact where we go tomorrow? And we better sure be honoring who's coming after us. When I was talking to Dr. Holdenack. He said back in 1997, um, the city was better known for a place to retire than it was to raise a family in. And I think those times have changed. And so if that's the case, we sure better be thinking of what happens down the road. I, I share this example of my wife's grandfather um, in Sampson, Alabama, where he, when he was alive, planted some pecan, pecan, pecan trees. I mean, yes, pecan trees. I was raised in Ocala. That's kind of some, you know, but uh, pecan trees. But he never, that I know of, got to partake of the fruit from those things. But yet what he birthed, what he planted years and years ago, my grandkid, my kid, his grandkids got to pick those and they were, they were kids. And so my whole point is that what we do today, that five, ten years example I gave earlier, it doesn't seem like it, but what we do today will impact them. The things we birth, the things we start, the things we establish, the things we cast today will impact them. And what we become known for, you know, I don't want to be a situation where we get like a frog in the water, right? Where the water's, we stick the frog and turn the water, you know, at, over time, it's easy to get caught up in, you don't realize, it, and then you're burned or whatever. You know, it's easy to lose sight of the long picture, long-term picture, because of getting caught up with today. So I think it's important that we, on top of everything else, we become a city that's known generationally, that we raise our family here, we honor the ones that came before, we celebrate them, but we also make decisions that impact what our ki their kids are going to lead us one day. And it's important we honor and give them a place to step into. So again, what will we be known for? Inside of your, uh, on your chairs, I told Pastor Barry, I kind of you know, called him out earlier. He does this high five thing, and I just started thinking about that. You know, if we had a high five, if, if he said, what are Mayor Mel's high fives values that are core foundational values for the city? I would say this, the family, honor, hospitality, opportunity, and generations. That, to me, is a core thing that we can all stand on, that every decision, if it's filtered through these five values, I think will give us clarity, but yet give us confidence. It will give us heritage, but yet give us vision. It will give us a foundation, but yet give us strength to rise above and cast vision of where we're going with a filter that's pure and strong, that honors our past, our present, and our future. And that, to me, is something we can stand on. So, take the card with you. I, I, I encourage you to put it, you put it on the wall or whatever as a reminder. Uh, something that's always have a vision before you. Um, I do thank all of y'all for coming out tonight. I really, really do appreciate it. I know the crab cakes were good, although I didn't get one yet. <laughs> but I got two two bite brownies. Um, and so I appreciate um, I appreciate everyone you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you have a great night. We finished.